X264, Quick Sync Video, NVNC, VCE. There is no shortage of ways to transform your screen into a video stream visible to potentially millions of people around the world. For the mad ballers among us, a second PC dedicated to that task is the undisputed king of performance and quality. But how do the rest of us get our streams going without crossing them up? AMD claims to have the best solution. But do they? Welcome to a new episode of <laughs> Manufacturers Say. Browse privately and securely with TunnelBear, the simple VPN app. Try TunnelBear for free at the link in the video description. One of AMD's top marketing points is that the 16 threads in their Ryzen 7 CPUs allow gamers to dedicate ample CPU resources to both gaming and video streaming coding without impacting the performance of either, since games won't make use of all 16 threads, and neither will an encoder. Meanwhile, one of Intel's selling points for their consumer-level chips is their integrated graphics processor and its ability to use quick sync video technology to encode a video stream without impacting the performance of their CPU. Well, that all sounds great! But with both of them claiming to achieve the same objective by very different means, well, surely one of them's gotta be better, right? Well, predictably enough, AMD says that their way, software encoding is superior, and the traditional wisdom would back them up on this one. The software-based X264 encoder is well known to offer higher image quality and more flexibility in its setup compared to other solutions. But until now, if you cared about performance, you'd almost never use it while gaming because its consumption of system resources was pretty much guaranteed to impact your gameplay unless you were running an extreme edition or something like that. But with more processing cores at Ryzen 7's disposal, it could be that AMD's onto something. Meanwhile, what are the other guys doing different here? Intel's QuickSync video, and for that matter, Nvidia's NVENC and RTG's Radeon Video Codec Engine are all what are known as dedicated hardware-based encoders, which present an interesting conundrum. In theory, you actually stand to lose virtually no performance, which is cool, but you're forced to use the optimized settings that are baked into the hardware, meaning that you can't really tune anything beyond their presets besides simply increasing the raw bitrate to improve quality. So finally, back to the big questions. How much does the encoder matter for quality? Is Twitch's new maximum of six megabits per second enough that it won't really matter anymore? Are any of these solutions really able to untether you from the second PC and let you stream without impacting performance? Well, we touched on this from AMD's perspective in our Ryzen 7 review, which you can check out here. And we asked you guys at that time if you wanted something more in depth. And since you did ask so nicely, your wish is our command. We're gonna focus on two games for our testing. First, Ashes of the Singularity's CPU benchmark. Not because it's a hot game on Twitch right now, but for technical reasons. It stresses the CPU and has a good mix of slow moving terrain with lots of small, fast moving projectiles that are great at introducing blocky artifacts during encoding. The second will be the For Honor benchmark with its sweeping cameras and loads of special effects. We know, again, most people aren't streaming these games, but canned benches are much more repeatable across our platforms, and both of these titles represent a realistic gaming load that is more demanding than today's popular esports titles. 
For our encoders, we've used common Twitch streaming bit rates and resolutions for all of our comparisons. You'll note that 1080p 30 is technically more data to cram into our lower bit rates than 720p 60, but the higher frame rate of 720p 60 should better highlight motion artifacts in our encoders. So any CPU, even one with onboard graphics, can use x264 encoding, but we observed in our testing that not all are created equal in this regard. We found that AMD's Ryzen 7 managed to, oh, excuse me. Oh, it just stuck up on me. Managed to avoid dropping frames throughout our testing at a higher quality preset than either of Team Blue's solutions. In some cases, even some of our hardware encoders needed lower presets. So to find out how these differences in encoding settings affect real world image quality, we captured a lossless reference recording with our Blackmagic Intensity Pro and used it for comparison. So we can see some subtle differences here. Ryzen manages to retain smaller details that get smeared out on Team Blue at their very fast and super fast settings compared to Ryzen's faster. This not only translates into better picture quality overall, but also contributes to better quality when Twitch then re-encodes it for its various quality options. Moving on, here we see our hardware encoders at 1080 30p at 2500 kilobit per second alongside our Ryzen X264 footage. Of the four, X264 on Ryzen appears to be the least likely to lose small projectiles in Ashes of the Benchmark. NVNC and QuickSync don't seem half bad here to be clear, but they do block up more often and lose finer details when a lot's going on at once. RTG's AMF encoder on the other hand, <clears throat> sorry Radeon fans, but uh, <coughs> Things get more interesting again at 720p 60. X264 holds up best once more, although the shimmering of compression artifacts on the cobblestones as the camera flies by is pretty noticeable, but not nearly as noticeable as it is with the rest of our contestants. NVNC is again at the head of the hardware pack looking decent, but our QuickSync and AMF footage are both abysmal, at times blocking up so badly as to appear as though they'd been recorded at 240p instead of 720p. We'll keep our visual comparisons rolling while we move on to performance. With X264, we see a respectable showing from our Ryzen 7 1800X, averaging about a 5 to 10% performance penalty on the faster and very fast presets over our baseline reading. On the 6900K, meanwhile, we get an average of a roughly 3 to 23% performance drop clearly a much more varied result, while our 7700K could get as high as a 36% hit, both of these ones on the super fast preset. AMD's high speed infinity fabric interconnect secret sauce for Ryzen's video encoding while gaming performance looks like it's working so far. Our hardware tests, meanwhile, show Ryzen actually taking a wider hit with NVENC at roughly 5 to 15% on average, while our 6900K managed a 3 to 10% variance, and our 7700K ranged from 2 to 18%. RTG's AMF encoder seemed to hit all of our chips less, with Ryzen taking a roughly 7 to 8% performance hit and sitting in between the other two. Though, as we've seen, the AMF encoder is also far from the highest quality for streaming. But we have one final encoder, one that we can't directly compare with any other CPU, and that's Intel's QuickSync video. Compared to the 7700K's baseline, it caused a 3 to 12% performance drop about in line with the rest of our hardware encoders. So finally then, Lining all our encoders up next to each other, we can see that actually Ryzen running X264 blows the doors off every other CPU encoder combination. 
It has a tight variation in its performance impact over our baseline numbers, and it handles a higher quality CPU preset, meaning that when Twitch re-encodes, you lose less detail overall. So taken together, it looks like AMD's marketing department wasn't asleep at the wheel on this one. Squarespace takes the hassle of building a website for your small business, for your portfolio, for the, for the sports team that you help run, and it throws it all in the garbage because Squarespace is super easy to use. It's only 12 bucks a month to start. You get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for a year. They offer 24 seven support via live chat and email. And all you pretty much gotta do, you might not even need it, is pick one of their gorgeous templates, put in all your own text copy and all your own images and boom, you've got a beautiful functional website that you can spend your time updating rather than spending your time fighting with compatibility of. So check it out at the link in the video description and start a free trial with no credit card required, then use offer code LTT to save 10%. So thanks for watching guys, dislike if you disliked, leave a like though if you liked it and get subscribed and maybe check out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store as well as our community forum, which you should totally join.